I think it's possible that Kamala Harris lost the election today with uh, her decision uh, to forego Josh Shapiro. Um, can't be stated enough. There's no path to victory really without Pennsylvania. CNN gets a reality check on Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. So in this video, we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, the breaking news that happened earlier yesterday was about uh, Kamala Harris picking her vice president running mate, which is Tim Wasp, ultra left, ultra progressive, call him whatever you want. And right now, she's on this high, right? The propaganda machine is hitting on full cylinders for her image, for her campaign. And as a result, the polls, the momentum, and all the energy looks like she's on her way to becoming the next president. However, there are still people who do not get caught up in all of this emotionally, and they look at what the facts really are. And so in this video, we're going to see how Kamala Harris really needs to start focusing on what's gonna win this election for her. Let's take a look. Uh, but I think this was a pick that was so safe that it may become risky mm. in its own way. I mean, he is, Tim Waltz is a perfectly uh, solid, respectable vice presidential pick. He's got a good story. Uh, he's accomplished a lot on things that Democrats care about. He's personable. As you saw, he's a good campaigner. But she did leave on the table the candidate who could help her the most in the state that she can least afford to lose. And that was a choice, not to pick the governor of Pennsylvania, whether it was politically motivated, you know, in terms of resistance on the left, whether there were personal chemistry issues. Nonetheless, you know, most models give her a chance of between five and 10 percent of winning if she doesn't win Pennsylvania. Right. right? That's the whole ball game. And, that, and, and, you know, the, the political science does not show that the vice presidential nominee guarantees you they're a home state, but it's more than zero. You know, and if the effect is more than zero in the state, you absolutely have to have you need a really good reason to bypass that person. And yeah, look, you saw some potential reasons there. He's a good campaigner. Uh, you know, they hope he can culturally relate to voters in states they have to win. But if they get to the finish line and they fall short in Pennsylvania and thus fall short in the Electoral College, there's going to be a lot of second guessing of this moment. OK, so you guys seen that. And yeah, that that's the picture of what the reality really is for her is she skipped over uh, Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania. Um, he, like I said in my other videos, he's Jewish. He did serve in the IDF. He's a big supporter of Israel. And I just think that they are pandering to part of their democratic base that is all about uh, Palestine. And I'm in the camp that this is going to backfire on them. Uh, I believe there are a lot of Jewish Americans out there that do not like how the Biden administration has operated. They feel like the overall handling of what's happening in the Middle East is subpar, and uh, it's become a huge problem for them. And so this Josh Shapiro pick not happening, uh, I definitely believe will come back to uh, hunt them. And of course, that's just one of the issues that they have going against them, which is why this gentleman made this point. Now they don't have such a clear winning hand. It's a, so I, Wait, I can I'm sorry, say that again? Well, they, they, had a, they, had a, they had a winning, Republicans had a winning oh, hand. Republicans yeah. had a winning yeah. hand. Yeah. 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 Right. We all needed yeah. to understand yeah. that. Yeah. Right. But, but, but I think to, to get back to the, the VP choice, I think, um, you know, obviously the guy has obvious charisma, obvious likability, right? He, he's everyone's favorite gym coach. He's everyone's favorite teacher. That's, all of that is upside. Uh, but the downside, you have to, you have to acknowledge this, what do you right? Say? The, the downside about Pennsylvania. And then the second downside, I would argue, is that it's a missed opportunity for, for Kamala to signal a pivot to the center. If you're a, a swing state voter uh, that is worried about Kamala's uh, you know, very left-wing record in, in the Senate, uh, picking a Tim Waltz is, is not necessarily the signal that Kamala is pivoting to the center, right? So. Yeah, so that's the uh, second thing that she has going against her. She doubled down on this whole uh, progressive movement. Um, and I really do believe progressives have hijacked the Democratic Party. I mean, the Democrat of today uh, is not the Democrat of 20 years ago. Um, and that's why I believe it's going to backfire on them in this election, because I think there's a lot of Democrats out there that are looking at what's taking place in their own party. And they just 
are not going to tolerate it. Now, there's always going to be people who are going to fall in line, like the celebrities and, you know, the big donors and the elites. I mean, that's always going to happen. That is a given. Also, the people who aren't going to do their research, they're just going to go based off what the news tells them to do, which is to vote for Kamala Harris. Um, but there's always those people in the middle that's closer to the center that lean more Democrat and also lean more Republican. But they're very moderate. Uh, these individuals, uh, I believe, are going to see through this whole propaganda storm. Um, they are going to see that this economy has not been uh, favoring them. And sooner or later, she's going to need to answer some questions. And so picking Tim Walsh only contributes to more questions that people are going to have for her. And of course, she has yet to give any answers on what she stands for, what her policies will be, and how she's going to improve the life of everyday Americans. It is time for Kamala Harris to sit down for a tough interview, to stand up for a tough press conference. She wants to be the president of the United States. Uh, it's time to answer some tough questions. I mean, Pre president Trump, you, know, you love him, you can hate him. The fact is that he, you know, if you tell him that you know, he'd be going around the room answering a whole bunch of questions from a lot of hostile media, he's like, all right, sign me up. He's happy to do it over and over again, I think. Uh, the time has come for Kamala Harris to uh, to face the music. OK, so you guys seen that and he's dead on. I mean, Trump will debate. He will answer tough questions. He's been doing that ever since he stepped in the White House back in 2016. And uh, it's no secret uh, that he's not going to back down from a fight. But this is the same party that claims that he is scared, that he is running scared, that all of a sudden the fact that he ran against uh, the Obamas, that he ran against the Clintons, that he is somehow scared of her. I mean, I, I find that to be so ignorant, but whatever. Uh, that's what they're running with. And he's not scared. Um, this guy just went to the National Association of Black Journalists. And let's just say that was a hostile environment. He didn't seem scared to me. This brings me to the point that um, you guys need to really pay attention to the Democratic Party. Um, they are They are a group of people that what they claim the other side is doing is exactly what they are doing, okay? They claim that President Trump is scared. They are scared. They are scared that if Kamala Harris has to actually do a debate right now, right, and take some tough questions right now in this moment, there will be people that will pull fundraising. There will be people that will pull their endorsements. There will be people that will be like, hey, wait a minute, this is, this is crazy. Because that's not who she is. She's not a debater. And she's not a person that should be in front of a microphone. It just is what it is. And I'm telling you guys this because they've already proven that they can get away with this. They did it to the sitting president of the United States, Joe Biden. Right? They made sure that his exposure was limited. He never got any hard questions. So if they could do it to him, they could definitely do it to Kamala Harris but like I stated, the big problem that she has ahead of her, and I believe is really going to backfire, uh, is what this gentleman said. I think it's possible that Kamala Harris lost the election today with uh, her decision uh, to forego Josh Shapiro. Um, can't be stated enough. There's no path to victory really without Pennsylvania. She was handed on a silver, silver platter, the extremely popular governor of Pennsylvania that could get, him, get her that one extra percentage point that could determine the election. There's a chance we look back on this as a huge mistake. We'll see, Natasha. I'm absolutely uh, in, in agreement with him on this. Um, and I'd always seen it this way, where the best pick should have been Josh Shapiro. But hey, I don't think the propaganda machine uh, news channels like CNN and her campaign are living in reality right now. I think they're up in the clouds. I think they probably believe they got everything on lock. And there's a lot of excitement right now. But sooner or later, that excitement is going to come down. Uh, reality is going to set in. And uh, Kamala Harris is going to have to answer some tough questions. And when that day comes, hopefully that day comes, uh, I don't think that the Democratic Party is going to be uh, looking forward to that moment. And so uh, if you're out there and you're wondering, hey, uh, what, what, man, is she going to win the election? Listen, pump your brakes, okay? What you're witnessing is a full on propaganda machine. It does not mean it's going to work. OK, it does not mean what they say is true. Most of the time, what they say is not true. Uh, we know the news is ultra biased. Um, and so this is another case of just good old fashioned common sense. 
The people in the middle who are not decided, they are hurting every single day. And one campaign is self-centered and talking about themselves. I'm talking about Kamala Harris and, you know, how great they are and how they're going to protect freedom. And then you have another side or the opposite side, which is President Trump, where they are talking about the policies that have failed that everyday American and what they're going to do moving forward. Uh, when it comes time for people to cast their vote, uh, I am very confident that um, for the people that are in the middle that, you know, they're not really loyal to a particular candidate, they're going to go with the person that clearly laid out a case or some type of policy and elaborated on how they would help them. Um, and so that's why I think uh, she's in for a rude awakening. And this is just the reality. Which is why this gentleman put it so nicely. At the end of the day, the dynamics of the race are still the same. Inflation is still devastating in the middle class. The Biden and Harris administration have no answer for that. You still have immigration, you know, you're being flooded by the border. You have 15 illegal, 15 million illegal aliens, illegal aliens who have come into this country. The Biden and Harris has no answer for that. You have wars in the Middle East. You have wars in Ukraine. You have other wars starting. Like the dynamics still exist, even though they've sort of changed the main course. It's still a problem for them. Yep, absolutely correct. It's still a problem for them. And so, like, I've stated, uh, reality will set in and those problems will become bigger for them and they will have to start answering uh, what they plan to do about it. So as I wrap up this video today, you know, uh, you're always going to have these ultra biased news channels. I always call them propaganda puppets that continue to support this idea that Kamala Harris is a perfect. And you've yet to hear any of them say, well, we still want her to answer tough questions. We really want to know her policies. They're not saying any of that. Right. Because they are just wanting to truly help her get elected so they can get rid of President Trump. But I have faith and I do believe that these swing voters, yes, they may not be uh, all into politics because they don't have time like that. Um, but I don't think they're stupid. I think they see right through the bullshit. I think Americans are really good at picking up people who are fake, which I believe that's what happened with Hillary Clinton. And uh, I think we're going to be in that same position again. Now, obviously, the media isn't what it was when Hillary ran. But nevertheless, it's still human nature. And I do believe that people who are hurting out there, why would they place a vote knowing that the last four years has not been the best for them? So that's my mindset. What about you? What do you guys think about, uh, you know, CNN getting this reality check about the, her presidential campaign? Right. Everybody's living in the clouds. And they've yet to come back down to earth and really see what's going on. So I want to know what your answers are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.